Hey everyone, Urban Fishkeeper here. I hope you're all doing well and you've had a good week and having a good weekend. Uh, so today's video is going to really be just a quick short one um, and it's to give everybody an update on how the artificial rearing of the discus has been going. Um, and I said I would, I would let you guys know in a week's time um, how that's all progressing. So I suppose I'm pleased um, and it's, it's really working well. And I'm comfortable saying that the urban technique is actually working. Um, just let me, sh I'll just show you some footage again for those of you that watched the previous one on how to artificially rear discus. There was batch one and batch two. Batch one was the smaller batch, um, and then batch two was the large batch that had the wrigglers and then went into free swimming. Um, and that, that video footage was in the previous one. So if you have a look here, um, this is batch batch one and you can see that batch one is really growing nicely. Um, I no longer leave the air stone with batch one and they're around 14-15 days now. Um, I removed the air stone about three days ago and they're on brine shrimp only at the moment and they're doing very well. If you have a look at this footage, this is batch two and if you remember batch two is coming up now to probably, uh, what's it now, week uh, um, so they're coming up to a full week and a bit um, that, that I've had them in the container and they're doing very well as well. Um, you'll see in some of the footage here that they're, um, I've taken the air stones out so you can see what the group looks like from a sizing point of view. Um, and then again with the air stones in and you can just, you can see them eating off the air stones. So a couple of things that I've picked up in the last two weeks that I want to share with you um, that that may have some bearing on the success or the not success. I don't know. I haven't had tried it long enough to be able to determine that. Um, but the one thing I did notice is that for the fry, when they're going through their initial week, week and a half period, they prefer the shadow part of the container. So if you look at the, the, the video footage that, I, that I've just inserted into this one, and if you ever look at the previous video that I posted on how to artificially reel them, you'll notice that they seem to stay in the shadow part of the bowl. Now the other thing I do is I run a very dim light um, on this unit here behind me, which is on at the moment. Um, I run that light 24 by 7, uh, or I have, for the fry. Um, and it creates a bit of a shadow on the one size side. The advantage of that that I found is that when I'm putting the air stones in with the food, because they seem to want to stay in the shadow, especially in that initial week and a bit, having the air stones in there means that they're feeding off it a lot more than if I just put the air stone in the middle of the container. Now whether that has any bearing or makes any difference, I don't know, um, but I have found that to be a factor um, when, you know, in the last two weeks of rearing. Um, as I've said, batch one are now purely on to brine shrimp. So we've got them past that initial phase. Um, they're doing very well, and it's really up to me now to take them through to the next, you know, next three, four, five, eight, ten weeks. Um, they've done their bit. It's now, it's now up to me. The, the, the challenge that I have right now is to decide when do I actually move batch one into a bigger container, into a little Zeiss or something like that. And I haven't figured out when to do that yet. Um, maybe this week, maybe I'll leave them for this whole week, do a quick update next week and again for you, and then move them after that. So a couple of other things that I've picked up. Um, if we talk about deaths, so where I've bred the discus and they've been a parent raised, like this pair here who's sitting on eggs again, um, and these are some of the, the babies that are still left. Um, even if they have a big batch of fry, I find that in those first couple of days, there's actually quite a huge percentage that die off. Now, whether that's because they're weak or, um, you know, the, the, the tank is too big and they just don't get to the parents, I'm not too sure what the reason is, but there's quite a fair percentage of, of die off. What I've noticed in the containers um, is that there is also a percentage of die off, um, but I actually don't think it's too bad. So on batch one, which is the smaller batch, in total, I've lost five fry out of that batch. Four of those fry were lost in week one, and one was lost in week two. Now, the interesting thing is, once they get past week one, I've noticed that you can clearly start seeing the weaker fry in the batch. And that particular one that, that died in week two definitely looked like the weaker one. It was smaller, and I don't think it was eating as well, um, and it spent a lot of time at the bottom. So 
Batch one, five over two weeks. Batch two, on the other hand, that's a really big batch when I siphoned it out. And I expected to have deaths um, and lose a fair amount of that fry. Now, I don't think it's the container size. Um, I think having that many fry in that size container at this stage of their development is fine. Um, but in that container, in, so with batch two, the one that's got a whole lot of the fry, uh, two things. One is I've upped it to two air stones in there because of the amount of fish in there. And the other thing is that I've lost in there approximately 25 fry out of that batch, about 25, 20 to 25. Um, I try and keep count of them as I siphon them out. Um, but I still don't think that's too bad and I think it's actually doing really well. Um, so overall, you know, urban technique seems to be working and I'm quite happy with that. A couple other things I um, picked up um, as well is on the containers. If you watch my previous video, the little container that I used to put the fry in that's got the holes and you put the mesh. I did find from the egg in the water, the mesh starts getting blocked after a, you know, a few days. So what I do is every day when, I, when I'm in the room and I'm just feeding or I'm around the tanks, I just use a little pipette, fill it with water in the container and just squeeze that water through the mesh holes just to open them up again to make sure that's clear. Um, and that's, that's worked fine. The other thing is what I've done is I've got one of these big ones, I think they're called turkey basters or whatever you can, you know, in the marine, the marine guys use it for feeding their corals. I use this to remove um, two to three full ones of these every time out of the, con every time I feed out of the container. Now with this, it siphons really strong. So be careful that you don't suck up babies. I just put it in on the side and all I'm doing there is just removing some of the older water. All that is water being filtered through and running through. It's almost like doing a, um, you know, like a 10% water change. So I just use turkey basket and I just take out three of these um, and then just leave it running and it fills up as per normal. And I just make sure I don't um, siphon any of the fish. The other thing as well, um, in any of my previous videos where I've spoken about uh, rearing anything or fry or breeding, I always speak about these guys, microworm. And I always have microworm available and ready at any time. I just keep it running all the time. I'm lucky that I did. Um, what had happened during the week is when I feed, I switch off my brine shrimp air. I then siphon, once they collect the bottom, I drain that off. I then rinse it and then I feed. That's the other thing. I only feed rinsed, newly hatched brine shrimp. I don't um, feed with that salt water. Um, I fed... I then went and did something else and I forgot that I'd left those two air, uh, the brine shrimp, both of them, I'd left them um, off. I came back a few hours later and both my brine shrimp uh, systems or hatching systems had collapsed and all the brine shrimp was dead because there was no air in there. Fortunately, I had a microworm available and I was able to use microworm to get me through you know, a day and a half, almost two days. So always good to have a bit of microworm as, as backup. All right, guys, that's it. Um, it's probably a lot, not a lot more to add. To everybody that's made comments about the, the first video on how to raise um, or how to artificially raise a discus, uh, thank you very much for those comments. I appreciate it. To those of you that have subscribed, thank you very much. And those of you who provide the likes, I do appreciate that as well. What I'll do is I might do another one next weekend, just a quick one again to, to see how they're going and if I've moved them and just to show you what the progress is like. And this is not a channel about discus, so you know I don't want to just do discus, discus, but I think for something like this where there's a technique now where the average hobbyist at home that has discus that are spawning and is getting wrigglers, there is now a technique that you can actually successfully raise them at home without having to do two hourly feeds, water changes every two hours, etc. And And just as a side note, um, how well I think the system is working is yesterday, which was Saturday, um, I had to go out really early. So I fed uh, brine shrimp to batch one and new egg to batch two at seven o'clock in the morning. I was then out of the house and I only got back eight hours later. Now, and I wasn't able to feed in between that and I hadn't prepared any air stones for, for somebody else to put in there for me. Um, so they were eight hours without 
any food changes or anything like that. And I'm pleased to say that I got back eight hours. The water hadn't fell. The water was still looking good. The fry was still nibbling on the air stones, whatever they could get off it. Um, and batch one was swimming around fine. They were obviously hungry, but they were fine. There was no problem. So, I, yeah, I'm feeling quite confident um, that this technique is working. Um, and I hope more people try it and give it a go and see if they can have success with it as well. Once again, guys, have an awesome week. Um, look after yourselves. Be safe, most importantly. Um, till next weekend, till the next video, Urban Fish Keeper out.